Hi, I'm Alex, and today we're taking a look at a beautiful aquarium supplier in the suburbs of Chicago. SR Aquaristic makes all their own aquariums, and has created the Aqua Lounge to show off the beauty of the aquatic world. They were generous enough to allow me to use their space for two whole days, capturing interviews for my film Fishing for Cardinals. I think you'll agree the interviews came out looking beautiful, and I can't wait for you to see the trailer for the film, coming out later this year on this channel, so hit that subscribe button. But today, here's an in-depth tour with the owner, Scott. Let me know in the comments which tank you'd like me to revisit in detail in a later video. I hope you enjoy the tour. Hi everyone, um, Alex has asked me to give you a short tour of the Aqua Lounge. So we're going to start here with our um, rimless shallow aquariums. Um, we have two different displays, uh, 30 by 30 by 10 centimeters high on our GFRC glass fiber reinforced concrete stands. Um, the finish on these is architectural cement. This um, rimless aquarium features bromeliads, Tillandsia, and our dragon wood. And we have some elephant skin stone in here as well, and various aquatic and terrestrial plants. Um, a bunch of small Pilates in this aquarium. And then we have here our shallow rimless um, betta aquarium. This was created by Rachel. We have various ferns and terrestrial plants, and then some java fern, and then some bucephalandria, and then some um, Anubius nana petite, and a little bit of java fern. Then we have two more um, rimless aquariums. This is a 30 by 30 by 30 cube on one of our pedestal um, tabletop stands. Um, this Rachel created, we have guppies, a bunch of terrestrial plants, some mosses, um, I think a little bit of Bucephalandria, and um, some crypts. And then another, this has got a little bit of algae that we need to take care of, but on this we have another tabletop. This is a 45 centimeter by 30 centimeter tall tank. Um, again, one of our favorites, dragon wood or dragon root, um, some beach pebbles, just a very simple scape. And then here's our Wabikusa or terrarium wall. Um, everybody always asks us what type of lights we use. These are just um, very simple Ikea lights, um, a bunch of different terrestrial plants, some Wabikusa balls um, decorated with some of our um, different styles of wood, um, some dragon wood pieces on the top, but a really cool, simple um, display very easy to take care of. I'll bring you to our table. Um, this was a collaboration with Zero Edge Aquarium and SR Aquaristic, um, featuring a um, Zero Edge Aquarium. Um, in this tank, very simple scape. We're using Siru stone, a big piece of dragon wood, Talanzias, and then uh, some tiger barbs. We found that the tiger barbs tend to, tend to stay in place. Um, and then we have our luminariums, uh, luminarium aquarium, luminarium terrarium, using different types of Talanzia. Um, here we're growing some um, red, red um, ambulia, or sorry, red cabamba. And then here we're experimenting actually with a little bit of salt water and some macroalgae. And then here we have a crypt and a couple of small shrimp. Okay, here we have some of our deco tank aquariums, the deco tank 15 and the deco tank 25, just a simple aquarium with a flip top canopy, LED lighting, um, simple scapes, um, lighting that will support quite a few different plants. Here we have some dragonstone and bucephalandria in this aquarium, just some java fern. Um, in here, some Anubius nana petite, some different crypts. Um, here we have an African cichlid scape. Um, this is featuring elephant skin uh, stone tan um, with two different types of um, cichlids. Very simple scape. 
Um, we're also using red flint sand, which is a favorite of us in the lounge. Very natural looking, um, very subtle type of sand. And then here we have a neon tetra aquarium. Um, again, simple plants, some floaters, um, mostly neon tetras, um, a couple of other um, accent fish, very simple scape. Um, lava rock, again, using red flint sand. Um, I think that that is also, that's our black spider wood. Um, the interesting thing about the black spider wood is we actually soak it in acid and then we will um, lay it outside in the sun to get that more um, weathered look, kind of a mature um, scape right away. Then we have a discus and rummy nose aquarium here. We're using melon discus, very simple scape, um, using um, cryptocorn wendidi bronze, I think that is, bronze or green. Um, probably around 100 rummy nose tetras, um, some melon discus, and there is also a breeding pair of ancestrous uh, bushy nose plecos. And then for lighting, we're using a simple light. Um, basically, it's our Adelites. lights. Um, very simple 50 watt Adelite. light. We built these um, surrounds for those Adelites. lights. I believe this one is using only one light, um, a 6500K Aquarium Essentials Adelite. light. Um, gives a nice shimmering effect, a uh, very beautiful tank or rimless glass aquariums. The thing I really love about this aquarium is we've only used a few um, of the crypt plants that have grown, I think from three initial plants now into like a jungle, overgrown jungle, where there's plenty of areas for the fish to hide. And the rummy knows love to school around um, those plants. Here's our Cardinal Toucher tank. Again, very simple scape. We're using a gravel and a sand in this aquarium. I find that um, the plants weren't doing very well just with the gravel. Um, we add a little bit of, of sand to it, which gives sort of a natural river bottom look. Um, we're, use, we're using different types of plants, wisteria in the back or hygrophilia deformis, um, holly, hygrophilia polysperma sunset, altenanthera renecki rosifolia, um, uh, je, uh, tiger lotus, and then another type of uh, narrow leaf hygrophilia in the back. Um, super simple scape. Um, we're filtering this with Owase canister filters. Um, every aquarium in the lounge, we use Owase canister filters. Um, one of the advantages, you can put the heater inside so it keeps it out of the scape, more natural um, look. We're using um, carbon dioxide on this tank, although it's probably not necessary. Um, a five pound CO2 bottle, our dual stage um, CO2 regulator. And then we're using also um, a pH controller um, set at 6.5 for this aquarium. Um, also featuring um, lava stone, black lava rock, and then again, our black um, driftwood. We run our whole lounge off of um, reverse osmosis DI water. Um, what we're doing is we're taking RO, DI, and then we have 400 gallons that we keep in stock for water changes. Um, one is for topping up where we use RO, DI, and the other we remineralize um, for all the planted aquariums. So 400 gallons we keep in stock. Um, here is our water change system. So it's very simple. Um, the two vats are plumbed. Um, we can bring these to all the aquariums and just top off or, or do water changes and add water. Um, they're run off all of our DC controllable pumps. Um, super simple, yeah. So basically simple valve. We can turn on the pumps with a smart switch. We can also turn them on when we're at the aquarium with a smart switch with our phones. And then we just open up the valve and top off the aquariums. It takes us you know, 10 or 15 minutes to top off all the aquariums in our lounge. I have the same system at home as well. And then these aquariums here, I'm not super proud of the way they look right now, but um, mostly this is just overstock that we have from um, fish that we've tried in different um, displays within the lounge. 
Um, some of these fish I've bred at home, all the angel fish I've bred at home. Um, when we do events in the lounge for the Chicago um, Library Association or Cichlid Association, they're always generous and always um, drop off some fish for us. That Anubius is terrible. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, it's always great to have some fish um, that we can put in inside the displays that are healthy and happy. And oftentimes if customers come by and we have plant clippings and things like that, we'll just hand them to the customer. That giant crypt in there, in the back here, Alex, that, that was in one of the, the aquariums that just grew like crazy and we just pulled it out last week. It's just, that came from one potted plant, just crazy. But it's great because when customers come by, we can, we can or friends of us in the hobby, we can give them some plants and we often trade with them. Um, again, more of those tanks. Um, this marine tank is actually all the corals that come from my tank or my partner's tank um, that just grow like crazy and we'll bring them in here and um, you know we'll give them to local stores or or to customers um, that would like a piece or a frag of those and then these actually were sitting in the back of our warehouse for the longest time and we were going to throw them out and I decided that we should make a cool beta display um, from them. So we actually ordered um, some of these pipe shelves and um, we just sat on top and then plumbed them all together into our sump um, just so that we can house some betas in here um, for our displays and also for our customers. It also needs a clean. And then this is a cool piece. This is actually, um, what spider look, wood looks like before they um, make it into the spider wood that we normally see within the hobby. So this is the actual um, complete tree um, that you would see before normally. This is the portion that you would be buying the root portion. Um, last time with, when I was um, at our collection site, um, I grabbed a bunch of these. I just think they're really cool. And then our rimless glass aquariums. Um, we're super proud of these. Um, low iron, um, glass, um, perfect silicone. We only use black silicone um, because we want the beauty of inside the aquarium to show, not necessarily the edge, although I have no problem with that. But for us, we've decided to go in this direction. Um, we actually have some really unique sizes um, and they were based mostly on how you could do a display. So we love these long, um, narrow tanks um, there's actually one missing, the one in the middle. I think we're sold out of those right now. But you can do some beautiful scapes with the um, wood pieces or the plants coming out of the aquarium. And then some, some smaller cubes. And then we have a bunch of our different products, some cool and unique products, our scaping um, tools, some really nice rigid nets um, that are shaped perfectly for catching fish, our deco tank aquariums, more luminariums, and then we have um, a hardscape wall. Um, this is just probably one one hundredth of what we have in stock, but um, a lot of times local retailers or local customers want to come in here and actually scape an aquarium. And a lot of times customers um, would like us to help them scape their aquarium. So we're always happy to do that. What we'll do is we'll mark out the size of the aquarium based on the customer's aquarium and then from what they want to, um, to create, what we'll do is we'll actually scape something for them and then send them photos, get feedback, and then tweak the display um, based on the customer's needs. Um, we do this all, we love doing this. It makes sure that we don't have a thousand aquariums at home, we get to play with other people's. So this is our scaping dojo. And then we have some more wood, some small sticks. Customers love to, to um, grab a few sticks for accent pieces. Siru stone, um, dragon stone, elephant skin, that's the tan. And then we also have ele elephant skin gray, petrified wood, black lava. And this has been quite picked over from the weekend, but like, look at this incredible piece. 
There's so many. Um, and then more escaping materials, pine spider wood, which actually I should explain is not pine, but we call it pine because it looks like a pine forest. So you can see the upright sticks coming up. So we call it pine spider wood. It's actually a type of rosewood. If you look closely, you can see the, the fine detail of where the thorns were. And these pieces often have burls. And then, believe it or not, a lot of marine scapers are using them this way. So they look like a mangrove uh, swamp as well, which is kind of cool. I want to show you the warehouse. It's not as sexy as the front, but um, this is where we have all of our, or most of our overstock. Um, we have more than this, but this is just a, a small amount that we pick when someone orders online or our local retailers can come in and we'll actually allow them to pick their own hardscape. Um, so we have some dragon wood. Um, we, we put it all in different sizes, so it's easier for customers to pick. Um, dragon small, medium, large, and then we have something cool. It's called gnarly wood. Um, it looks a little bit like um, African Mopani, a little bit on the front, and then grape wood on the back, which is really kind of cool. And a lot, lot of paludariums or reptile enclosures um, use this wood. I prefer the non-gnarly side, but I can see the beauty of both. This could be a great signature piece if you just have a small, um, just hardscape aquarium, it's quite nice. And then more gnarly wood, and then we have some jumbo gnarly wood, um, small pine spider wood, different types of spider wood. Again, this is not pine wood, but it has, looks like pine forests. And then black spider wood, or sorry, more pine, more pine, and then black. And the cool thing about the black spider wood, you always know one of, one of us has been back here because we pull out pieces that we really love. And we usually put those in our WYSIWYG. And then um, this is black spider wood, which is kind of interesting. Um, we soak it in acid and then we put it outside in the sun so that it's more of a weathered, um, weathered type of look. And then we have various sizes of that. And then all of our rocks um, are all pre-cleaned. So we will pressure watch, wash each individual rock and then we wrap and then um, put it in cases. So it's staying super clean, um, just a quick rinse and you can put it right in your aquarium, including Dragonstone, which is notoriously full of clay. There's nothing wrong with the clay, but um, we don't want you to have to pay for clay. So we clean it out ahead of time. And then we put all of our rocks into small, medium, and large. And then we have the jumbo pieces as well. So um, it's just easier for, for stores to order that way. That way everything is neat and tidy. So this is our WYSIWYG selection. Um, what you see is what you get on our website. Um, it's not the nicest room, but um, what we do is when we're digging through the vats, which we all do because we're all super nerdy and hobbyist as well, looking for the coolest pieces. Um, what we'll do is we'll take some of them that are unique or interesting, or we think that might lend themselves to a, a beautiful scape, and we'll, we'll tag them so each one has its own number and tag, and then we'll put them on the website so that customers can see exactly the piece that they're going to get. We put it in our dojo so that you get measurements of the piece, and um, yeah, these this is our, our small WYSIWYG room where we have some of the our favorite hardscape. We have a little area back here where we keep some of our bigger pieces, just a few of them anyway. Um, some bigger pieces of hardscape. Um, I love these pieces. You can make so many things out of it. A lot of people use these for um, ponds as well or planting um, terrestrial plants, succulents, things like that. But like just gorgeous, that one's one of my favorite. It has all kinds of pleco caves in it. Um, but I can't keep bringing stuff home, so I have to be careful. And then some of our larger pieces of rock um, for some big signature skates. We carry some big dragonstone pieces. Um, look at this beautiful elephant skin stone. Some larger pieces of petrified wood. Um, just, just gorgeous pieces. With the larger wood, oftentimes the professional scapers that visit us like to buy smaller pieces because you can combine them to make a bigger piece. And then there's more creativity involved. 
And I love doing that as well. And then if you ever want to redo your scape, you're not stuck with one piece. You can put a whole bunch of pieces. So you can see some of the big, bigger pieces. I mean, look at the detail on that. So a lot of public aquariums um, purchase these from us. And then a lot of people using these for architectural pieces. Like we had a lady just order two pieces to create a sink in her bathroom. So, and we can help hand select those pieces as well. Um, we're located at uh, 1441 Timber Drive in Elgin um, in Illinois. And then obviously online, we sell everything mail order at uh, sraquaristic.com. Great, well, thanks for the tour. You're welcome, thanks for coming by. I've left a link to the SR Aquaristics website in the description of this video. So if you wanna learn more, visit their site. And if you like this video, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Finally, a very special thanks to my Patreon supporters who make these videos possible.